Hi, good morning, everybody. Happy, thankful Thursday, wherever in the world. This is Dozen again speaking internationally, locally. Everyone, get up, get up this morning. Give thanks unto the Lord this morning. Before he is good and his mercy endure it forever and ever and ever and ever. So, give thanks unto the Lord for every single thing. Right? Not one day is giving thanks. Every day is a miracle. When you get up in the morning, that is a miracle. You, When you get up and you speak, that is a miracle. So thank God for journey and mercies. Thank God for every single thing. Right? And there we are going to read Psalm 23. Because today is the 23rd of April, 2020. Okay? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Father Lord. We thank you for life. We thank you for every single thing that you are giving to us, Father Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, this will be a blessing to people, hearts, wherever they are in the world, Father Lord. I pray, Father Lord, that the scripture verses, Father Lord, will be a blessing to their hearts, Father Lord, that they will uplift and nurture and motivate, Father Lord, them, Father Lord, into coming to getting to know you, Father Lord, Father Lord, and repenting and doing the right thing, Father Lord, in your sight, Father Lord. I just thank God, Father Lord, for getting me and waking me up, Father Lord, to see other day, Father Lord, in the early morning, Father Lord. I pray, Father Lord, that people who are sleeping in their bed still or they are waking up for the lord for to see the sunshine for the lord will be thanking you and praising you and magnifying your holy name because your name is worthy to be praised for the lord i just thank the lord for about to give your scripture verse message for the lord and your lecture session for the lord i pray for the lord it will be a blessing to the hearts for the lord so just ask this for the lord give me thanks for the lord jesus christ all amen you are worthy to be praised have your lord yes you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy i thank you lord yes for every single thing for the lord in the name of jesus for the lord you are the king of kings and lord of lords for the lord you are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the government saying hallelujah jesus god lord give thanks unto the lord for his mercy and joy forever and ever use me oh lord use me oh lord because you are worthy to be praised oh lord because you are worthy to be praised oh lord i love you i love you i love you lord you are only you are worthy to be praised. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy in all. You are holy. You are holy to be worthy to be worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy to be praised, worthy to be praised. You are holy, sing your praises. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Worthy, worthy to be praised. So I hope you love these songs, but let us get down into Psalm 23. Okay, so Psalm chapter 23 verse 1, I know this by heart. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the, the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name and mercy's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with all my cup and it's over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So I really know this verse by heart, by scripture. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me to side of water. So that means to say the Lord is my all. The Lord is my everything. I could count on him for every single thing. Because Jesus Christ is the way maker. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the redeemer. He's everything to me. And he's the shepherd. And we are the sheep of his pasture. We are the body of Christ. Right? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. So he makes me. That means he. We lying down. We are hanging around with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are drawing closer to him day, daily. Every day of our lives we are drawing closer to the Lord. 
right? Because he's our rock. He's our refuge in the time and trouble and despair. We call upon his name. He's just worthy and omnipotent. He's everything. He's El Shaddai. He's Elohim. He's our provider. He's our sustainer. He's everything. So we can depend on him. And we must be thankful and grateful for what he's given to us. He's given to us life. Because people cannot get up. So much of people are dying. Right? But we thank the Lord that we are still alive and well in the Lord. So always be grateful and thankful for what you have. Okay? So, verse 3. He refreshes and restores our lives. He leads in the path of righteousness for his name and mercy's sake. So he leads us. Right? He restores our soul. That means he restores everything according to Joel 2.25. He restoration, elevation. He restores our new life. Right? He restores everything about us. Right? He resets the button. That is resetting. Right? He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name and mercy's sake. So that means to say he leads us in the righteousness, the promised land. He leads us everywhere. Right? He directs us to the path of righteousness to the part of the promised land to the part of our direction because the direction that we are taking in the lord is a direction of eternal life and salvation okay yea do i walk verse 4 through the shadow of that i will fear no evil so you could walk in the shadow of death what evil people what enemies what the enemies doing you will fear no evil why? Because when you walk in the shadow of death and all these things, that means to say that you you are lost. You are lost in darkness, right? You are in the darkness, right? You, Lord, I walk through the fire of shadow. I will shall fear enough of you. For thou art with me, my rod, and I staff thee comfort me. So, God is your comforter, right? God will take you out of your darkness and into the marvelous light. Right, because whatever comes out in you that will always be in the light. So God is going to take you out of whatever bondage you are and set you free from the bondage. Because for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we have a gift, right? Eternal life through salvation, through Jesus Christ. That's what this say in Psalm 23, verse 1. Right? And verse 5. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Right? He anoint my head with oil and my cup run it over. So that means before everybody, everybody who used to hate you, do you all kind of wrong things. God is going to prepare a table in front of your enemies. Right? So your enemy is going to see the glory of the Lord in your life. God will is a shining light. Right? God is going to use you as God is going to use you for his glory and for his kingdom and all these things. Right? So prepare a table. So he's going to for the banquets or everything, long tables, and have you eaten and sit down like a queen or a king, as how you is, right? Because we're in the kingdom of God. We have the crown of righteousness on our heads, right? So God is going to prepare a table in front of your enemies. Because the enemies who do you wrong, the haters who do you wrong, God is going to see to it that them see for themselves that Jesus Christ, and they, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is God. So God is going to do that right and he is going to be overflowing and all pouring all pouring blessings he's going to give you you see how much things you see when you trust and obey and you seek him daily and all these things it will prepare god is going to make a way for you where there seems to be no way god is going to god is going to pamper you right god is going to do that because you are was obedient to him you didn't give up never ever give up Always keep on going and you will see the reward. You will see your reward. And you will see the reward of the wicked too. You're going to see. The enemy is going to be so shocked that you'll say, wow, God is good all the time. Hold on. Sorry about that. That's family. Okay. But coming back to Verse 6, surely or surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. So surely and goodness and mercy. 
So goodness, mercy, favor, and grace shall follow you all as well because you've been obedient to him, because you're going to the word, because you're praying. God is going to reward you, and this is a rewarding factor. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So God is your your God is your shepherd. God is the eternal shepherd. God is the one that keeping you, right? From your enemies. God is the one that protecting you and sustaining you every day of your life. So make use of your life. Make use of your life. Learn to pray. Learn to consecrate. Learn to do these things. Otherwise, you will not see the reward, right? That is coming, right? God is making a way for you right now. God is making a way in the in the midst of all these storms. God is making a way for you. And you receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive every single thing right now. Okay? Hold on one minute. Guys, see that's my father. Hold on. So, as I was saying, is that God is going to take you from the from the pits of where in the darkness, and He's going to put you in front of your enemies. So Psalm twenty three was one to five. Okay, that just my, was my father also talking in the background, right? But in the morning time, every morning and thing, that you get up in the morning, you thank the Lord for every single thing, okay? So, coming back, so we dealt up with Psalm 23, verse 1 to 5. I hope you all enjoy. Don't mind the interruptions and think God is good all the time. I don't, I don't worry. I don't fret. I don't complain. I always trust in the Lord all the time because he's my rock. He's my strength. Anytime I trouble and despair, you call upon him. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, that my family could wake up. Thank you, Lord, that you could just set me on a stool. Well, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, glory to the Lord. And you just shout out. Shout to the Lord, all the earth and the sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the words of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, no, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, ever seems to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth that I sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down as the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the words of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. And nothing compares to the promise I have in you. So I hope you all love this version. So we are going on today to chapter 6 of 
the key to happiness series i hope you all love this seg a lovely segment of my singing because i love to sing for the lord right because god is merciful and his mercy endureth forever i hope the verse the scripture verse will be a blessing i don't mind the interruptions i'm telling you but god is good all the time and all the time god is good so So chapter six, if you have your pens, if you have your books, if you have really materials, take down notes because take down notes, telling it every day, take down notes when Josen is coming on. Okay. So get your finances under control. One of the big factors in life that can zap your happiness is financial stress. Everybody is going through a recession, right? Some people didn't get their pay or whatever on time. But remember, God is good. God will see you through any time of trouble and despair. Call upon him and pray. Prayer does change things right through God, okay? So one of the big factors in life that can zap your happiness is financial stress. It is true that the economy is tough, but that isn't an excuse to be in on, on bills and owing lots of debt. Take responsibility so that you are able to feel good about your financial situation. If you have the mindset that more money would solve your issues you are wrong it is true that you should strive to live above the poverty level yet financial comfort isn't going to equate to more happiness for many individuals it can mean less free time and more stress so always remember do not take it out on yes the economy is very tough outside there recession all kind of things going on but remember you have to take responsibility and take accountability for yourself and, and it will be, you'll be more happier, right? Love your career. The number of hours and years that the average person spends working in their lifetime is very high. Therefore, you need to love your career. If you are going to be happy, don't take a career you hate just to make more money. Of course, it is important to make sure you have a job that will pay the bills, right? So you have to love what you are doing, right? Do not take a job and you don't love what you're doing. Don't make any sense, right? Learn to look in read books more and pray more okay some people get a job and they stay with it for decades they continue to move up the ladder and they do very well they are jobs that are a good starting point but they aren't going to move forward don't get trapped in a dead end job it is never too late to expand your territory or your knowledge look for a new job learn a new skill or even go back to college to earn a degree so you have different options and choices right if you want to go back to school and learn something, do that. If you want to um, motivate people, just as Josan is always doing videos, okay, do that, okay? But you have your own choices. If you want to be a business person, and you just have to take a business degree or whatever to be running a business, right? Some people just do it offhand. Some people just do it, but okay. So budgeting. In order to get your finances under control, you need to take a good inventory of your spending. So remember, limits on your spending, right? Learn to be content with all you have, but limited. That means budgeting. That means having a budget chart every day, right? If you have a piggy bank, put coins in, right? Save some money. Learn to save. Because too many times people like to spend, 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 and they don't have nothing. And they con and complaining and con and really conflicting their own life and their life not happy right now because they're not saving up their money. Okay, make a list of all your monthly bills. This should include rent or mortgage, car payments, leading, leasing, public transportation, insurance, utilities, groceries, medical supplies, and medication, childcare. Okay. Next, make a list of all your variable expenses. These are unsecured debt items that you can pay off. Credit card, personal loans, and revolving credit. Make a list of all of your income and compare it to your expenses. This is what you have left over each month with your variable expenses. Do what you can to pay more than a minimum each month so you pay it off quicker, right? And reduce overall interest. So that means to say, that all what you have, like utilities and things, you need to be paying these things on time because you don't want your life to cut off 
You don't want nothing to cover. Always pay your rent on time. Always pay whatever on time. And you will be safe and sound. You don't have to worry about the landlord putting you out all these things. Because so many times people doing that and they're in streets and they don't know where they're going. They don't know what they're doing in the morning because they have nowhere to go and no place to go. Not even their family want to take them back. Some families are getting so frustrated that they they and they can't get along and all these back and all conflicts. So to avoid these conflicts and confusion with family members and friends and people alike, learn to have your own place, learn to do your right things, learn to get, because getting your own place is a good thing and pay any bills. So be on time, right? And in order, do things decency and in order in life and balance out your life. And that is how you have a better life to live, right? And cooperate, right? C-O-O-P-E-R-A-T, cooperate. That is agreement too, okay? So plan of action. If your budget seems out of control, get help. There are many financial um, institutes that will help you to budget without any charge. They have budgeting classes that help you to get back on track. If you are lacking or if you are a significant other, the plan of action for finances should be done as a team. Create goals that you both work towards and re-evaluate your plan regularly. If your expenses are far more than your income, it is time to make some changes. Can you get a second job to supplement the income and pay down debt? Can you work from home in your free time to generate more money for the household? Perhaps you need to move to a lower price residence or you need to trade in your car for one that is more affordable. If you owe a significant amount of unsecured debt, talk to them about lowering your interest on a payoff. If you provide a lump sum of cash, for the account, they may significantly lower the dollar amount that you owe in order to successfully erase that debt. It is best to avoid consolidation lenders as they often have high fees and your credit score can suffer in the end. You also to avoid filling bankruptcy unless it is absolutely necessary. So that means to say that do not allow the bills to pile up. Do not and do not borrow from nobody. You see, when you borrow from people, you have interest. If it's 15%, you have to pay back more than that. If it's 20%, you have to pay back more than that. It always keep on adding, adding a hundred dollars every time, right? So you go keep on piling up and building up, right? Do not be a borrower. Do not be a lender either. Learn to keep your money. Learn to save your money. You see, when you save your money, you will have. When you, when you don't save your money and keep on borrowing, borrowing from people, people are going to find you where you're living and they're going to come and knock on your door and say, well, miss or miss, Miss Smith or Miss um Miss right Miss Job right Miss Job has money for me owing so and so and I come to get my money and I want my money now and then it will have police will come by your house and all kind of back and all right so to avoid all these confusion and doubt and all these things now learn to save your money to avoid these things because too many times people running away running away from borrowing money right and they're doing and it piling up on them and all these things and then it will cause you to fret and worry and also have conflict in your brains and mind and thinking well okay well you know i really i thought this and thought that you ain't thought nothing you already know you had to pay up and anytime you don't pay up you know what the consequences for not paying up now okay so that is just examples and thing i'm showing you all for you all to, to avoid certain things in life and you could avoid it but just people just don't understand right they just want to do what they want and get away free but remember nothing is by free right you have to pay up you have to be responsible for your own actions right extras pay attention to how much you spend for extras eating out going to the movies and even buying coffee at a cafe can all add up quickly when you identify where you are spending your money you can cut down on some of these extras identify one or two things you really want to have extra allocate an allowance for them and once it's spent that is it okay so sometimes you feel to go a little restaurant or a little kfc or a little place to really eat out and thing but sometimes you do have hardly have money you check your money okay i have a hundred i have 120 I have 200 this money is really to buy 
insurance, clothes, whatever, right? And you have a little extra if it's at $20. And you can't even, you have to squeeze in money because you spend the majority of money, right? And you ain't studying well, okay, for the next day as you do it. You have to budget these things. You have to be handling your management. Have a proper, right, spending limit, right? So today you put, okay, so take for example, just for example, I just, is that just a reference I draw it? Say, okay, you have $10,000, right? And you say, okay, I'll take out $5,000 in the bank, right? And I'll leave $5,000 there, right? And when you take out the $5,000, you're wondering, you're saying, okay, $500, right? When you take out, okay, $5,000 from $500 is $4,500, right? Left back, right? So $500 will go for... Um, 500 is go for grocery. I just saying something. And the other a thousand dollars will go for 500. 600 dollars will go for um, paying bills. And the other money, the rest of money will go for groceries and clothes and food. And even if you are children too, they go want a little something. They want to buy a little dress, um, pants, whatever have you and thing. And you know the money will finish, right? Because in these timing and thing, according to whatever currency you have, it might be a different currency, different country, different state, everything, right? All together. But you have to economize. You have to balance out your life still. You still have to say, well, if I have enough, and then some people is go to church, they put a little offering, have a little tide, whatever, right? To make up. But sometimes and thing you have to really use your discretion and use what God gives you, your conscience and your wisdom to really understand these things. So really go say, well, look, I have this. You have it on a paper. You have it on a book. You have a budget book, right? Get a, get a little um, single line book or a notebook and write on budget. Put budget book in front, top heading, right? Have your columns, everything, right? Put on your expense, like your utilities, your groceries, whatever you spend, like expenditure, put them down, write them whatever, how much you to spend and thing, and add them up and take away whatever you don't want. So you'll be able to know you have a clear picture or clear budget that you can say, well, right in the morning time, if it's for me to carry my, my children to school, I have my little thing to pay the people and them. Right in the morning, I have the clothes when I order, everything balanced out now and in order. So you will know, you will see where you're going. But when you have everything jumbled up and you're doing this and you're spending it out and you're doing that and you're not saving your money, you won't have for long. You won't have nothing. Okay? So that is how you have to see where your budget going. So always do down, always write down these things. Write down them things in a book. I always have a budget book. Always have things um, in decency and in order. So you'll be able to recognize what you are where you went wrong all these things okay so that's just an example but you could take the example and use it in your daily life so it'll be better for you right savings see we're saving money in addition to paying your monthly bills you should also be paying yourself allocate a percentage of your income or set a dollar amount for savings this is important so that you can have money in place for emergency so then you won't have to use a credit card or revolving credit should there be an emergency. When you use money you have saved, you don't have that interest to think about, okay? So savings is like when you're saving your money, that means like you have a piggy bank, you have 25 cents pieces, you have 10 cents, you have 5 cents, whatever, you put it in a piggy bank, you save it up. You don't, you don't touch that, right? Savings come like the same 5,000, the same 10,000, I tell you. 5,000, right? 5,000 savings, right? You don't touch that money, right? If it's an emergency or any emergency and you want to take out some money, no problem. But then you keep on doing so you won't have, right? So saving is a good way of really saying that, okay, I am going to keep that there for my any emergency I could take out something, okay? In the event of an emergency, that's for only emergencies. Okay, retirement. 
how it are people retiring from fourth okay 50 and up right they are retiring they work hard they get their NIS, they get their pension, they get whatever, right? If a disability grant or whatever, right? In the, that whole category, they already work for years and thing, and they're retiring. That means that they're not working, they're no longer working, right? Preparing for the future is also very important. Retirement may seem like a long time from now, but it will arrive. Being prepared for it is very important, and you need to start as early as you can. Do not start late. Start early. Have a re retirement plan. Go in your bank. Talk to them, right? Do it early as possible for you to get your benefits and all these things, okay? If your employer has retired plans such as a 401k, contribute the maximum that you can. If your employer doesn't offer this, you should talk to a retirement advisor, right? They can help you to get a con set up. If you change from one job to the next, roll over your retirement plan instead of cashing it out, okay? So this is for people who in the work for experience for all these years, 30 years, 20 years, according to, okay? You do up, if it is you go to employer and they don't have the 401k, you could go by advisor, retirement advisor, and let them show you the plans, what they have, the offers, what they have, if they have more, less than that. You could like sign up with them, you know, to accommodate your benefits. Otherwise, if you don't get benefits from them, that means that it don't make any sense, okay? But people who doing these doing these um work for all these years need benefits because they get a little fifty percent up on their salary or whatever, okay? So you should diverse, diversify your portfolio so that you have retirement funds spread out. This will help you to avoid a huge loss should any certain investment not do very well. The level of risk you take with your, with your retirement is also important to think about. The closer you get to retirement, the less risk you should be with those funds. So you see, you must have a portfolio, right? A portfolio means that you must have everything in an order. You must have everything joined together in order so you will be able to settle and be more happy and comfortable with what you want to do, right? Do not wait until late because if you wait until late to do these things, you will never reach your goal, okay? Always remember, start early. Start early, start now, right? Because retirement is when you will retire from your work, you will have benefits, your employer might pay you, right? The company might pay you a little 50% of your salary, or you might get bonuses or awards or whatever, checks or whatever. But start early, right? Do not wait until later down the road. Because later down the road, it doesn't know what could go on, right? Start today, today, and tomorrow, tomorrow, okay? So, all of this have to do with the key to happiness, right? So, the key to happiness is not only about being happy within yourself, but also about budgeting your limits, budgeting your money, saving up your money, right? So, that is, just recapping, we dealt up with today, Psalm 23, was 1 to 5. I explained that to you, and we had a little session with devotional praise and worship okay and now we dealing with the key to happiness chapter six and i and i dealt up with get your finances under control and we deal up with the budget and love your career and budgeting your money and plan of action okay and extras and savings and retirement and i dealt up with all of that so in the summary overall is that Learn to save your money. Learn to not squander it on things that you don't need. Learn to pay your bills on time, right? Learn to pay your rent on time. Learn to do these things. Otherwise, you have to make yourself happy. And you have to cooperate with your landlord. Otherwise, if your landlord is giving you some obscene language, re like call the police. Don't bother to fight them. Don't bother to think because it will reach, it will escalate to a different scene and all these things. Do not make no scene with nothing, right? 
talk to them if you want to talk to them say well okay sir i only have a thousand dollars right right now i didn't get no pay you're not going to explain to them that the boss or whatever you're not going to explain to them all you're going to tell them say it short and sweet use don't use no long long thing well you know as this and that and the other happen and all kind of thing right learn to use your words short and sweet to get to the point right because you know some people love to do that they love to really have a long story and we ain't getting to no point you ain't getting nowhere with that whole conversation what they talk because that come like it, it didn't make no sense to talk in the first place right learn to think before you speak and think before you act and think before you do things in life so you'll be able to have a better life so you won't have to worry and you have to have no worry and no doubt and no conflict and no fear kicking in in your life now right you will always be soothing you always be happy all the time right and cooperate with the landlords and them right right make sure you have a budget plan make sure you have a book and a pen so you could write down whatever writing keep on writing so you'll be able to see and then the retirement too have make sure and have everything in order because when you do that you will be able to live a better life you will be able to the surroundings and people will be able to trust you and all these things okay so i hope this whole lecture session will be a blessing to your hearts and i hope you all take heed whatever i said this morning and today okay so let us pray heavenly father we just thank you for this day we thank you for everything father i pray the father lord that this session was going to be a blessing to people hearts father i pray father in the name of jesus father lord, they will be listening to me and focusing me and this will be a tool and a strategy for them to do the right thing father lord and everything will be good father so we just ask this father lord, give them a blessed day father lord, wherever they are internationally in the name of jesus christ our oh lord amen amen so you have a blessed day I'm looking very wonderful this morning very nice today so i hope you all have a blessed day i hope this will be a blessing don't mind the interruptions but i hope you only focus on the lord jesus christ pray seek him thank the lord for everything learn to budget out your life learn to write down things learn to cooperate and you will be a happy you right it all starts with you and be responsible and accountable for your actions right okay and learn to be a team too okay all right so you have a blessed day i'll see you tomorrow on another video okay bye bye love you all with the love of jesus and i'll always be praying for you and bye bye